Uh, Tom Bradshaw, I'm an arable farmer from Essex. Um, I was asked to speak at the NFU Business Symposium uh, back in January, where I had a 20-minute slot. Today I've been asked to distill that to you in five minutes, which is uh, obviously a little bit more challenging. I returned to the family business in 2003, uh, 2004, having done a degree in y uh, down at Y College in agricultural business management, and then spent a little bit of time over in New Zealand uh, seeing how they do things over there. The picture on the left there in 2002 is, the, is what I returned back to when I was uh, returning to the family farm. We were a traditional mixed farm. Um, Dad was very heavily involved in the dairy 24-7. That's what he did. That's what he knew. And I guess that's what he loved. Or at least he thought he loved it anyway. Um, I'd been home at the farm for about a month and I'd looked through all the figures. And in the mid-90s, Dad had brought his brother out of the partnership and he you know, borrowed a reasonable amount of money. And I guess... When I looked at the dairy cows, I was just looking at it thinking, how, how are we making any money out of what we're doing here? And so trying to sort of look at what's developed the change and how things have changed and why they've changed, one of the things I've got written down here is courage. And the courage here was not from me. I was a cocksure 21-year-old at the time. It was from my father. Because I'd only been back on the farm for a month, and I turned around to him and said, Dad, I think we should sell the cows. And within six weeks, we decided the cows were being sold and we were looking for alternative uses for the business. It took huge courage from Dad to give, that trust, give me that trust and that opportunity to really go home and influence the way we were farming and what we were doing with our business. Um, he'd always had a dream of being able to walk around the farm, as, farm in his slippers. I'm not sure that he realised selling the dairy cows was part of that. So as we look forward, back in 2002, we had 130 cows. We are contract farming another dairy herd, a little bit of arable and growing some uh, amazing grass for the cows. In 2018, we're contract farming just over 1,200 hectares. We've got a, a grass and environmental for the equestrian, uh, the grass and some environmental areas, uh, mid-tier and higher tier. We've got a large equestrian centre, which you saw in the picture uh, back there on the right. Um, and we've got a little bit of solar, and I've been really lucky to get involved in quite a lot of industry initiatives um, from the BBC Harvest Program to the Monitor Farm um, and the NFU Crops Board. We've been changing, we've been adapting our business for years. That's what farmers do, we adapt to the market. The market changes, we do something different. And so now I think we've just got a clear line in the sand with Brexit. We've got to adapt, we've got to look forward, and we've got to look at our opportunities. <coughs> We need to look at our assets. Within 20 miles of home, I have 800,000 people living, and with 30 miles, I have 2 million people living. They are an opportunity. They're there. I can't do anything about them being there. So now I need to look at how I make money out of those chimney pots as part of my business. So our diversified business is now a very stable backbone to the business. It's, it doesn't drive all the profit, but it's there year in, year out. It's weather resilient, and we've been really incredibly lucky. We feared a recession with the equestrian business. But we soon realised that people love their horses more than they'd, well, they'd go hungry rather than seeing their horse starve. So the horses are a really important part of their family. We had plenty of luck. When we'd made the decision to sell the dairy cows, we'd seen an advert in the paper um, for a riding school looking to relocate. And I rang the riding school up and I said, uh, you know, we've seen the advert, you're looking to relocate and we'd be able to offer you a facility. And they said, thank you very much for the phone call but um, we've already found somewhere. We'll take your details, but uh, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. And then genuinely, the following day, they rang me back and they said, where we're moving to has all fallen through. Can we come and see you? And when they visited the farm, they saw a, a milking parlour, a, a yard where the cows lied, a feed area, and I was like, well, this is going to be the indoor school. And they were like, an indoor school? And I said, yeah, yeah, this will be an indoor school. And so, but there was that moment of luck where where they were heading to fell through and they, they came to us. Uh, we bought that business back in April last year, and uh, again, it, it's just it's sort of now we have everything running on the site. But, uh, so we've got 70 stables, and uh, yeah, it's a really um, core business for us. I've been really lucky to travel the world with Nuffield. I've done the Worshipful Company of Farmers course. There are so many uh, continued professional development programs. Training in farming seems to be a bad word. There are so many opportunities out there for us to get out there and learn and really look at what we're doing in our businesses. One of the best things about Nuffield was that I was away from home for eight weeks. In that eight weeks, you look in on your business and it really does make you focus and make sure that you think you're doing the right thing. I spent four days in, uh, in America at the uh, Acres USA conf conference. It was the most challenging four days I had in my whole Nuffield um, experience. We were, they were questioning everything I was doing from the use of um, fertilizers, plant protection products, grass-fed beef. You know, they, they really are the extreme green of, of uh, American farming. 
But that challenge and going through that process and then coming out the other side and still doing the same thing, but justifying those decisions in our mind, why we were using fertilizers, why we were using plant protection products, was a really powerful experience. Um, most importantly, we need to understand the costs and, the, and we have to have a real um, understanding of our budgeting and where it's heading. These are some figures that I put together when we were doing the Monitor Farm program. We had an open day back in 2015. But they're the figures that really, really made me focus on my business. Back in 2003, a hectare of wheat was costing about £210 a hectare in variable costs. By 2014, it was costing £580 a hectare. Oilseed rape, which used to be a cheap break crop to grow, was costing about £180 a hectare. And by 2014, it was costing £580 a hectare. They were real figures out of one of our contract farms. The impact that had on our capital requirements. But in 2003, to farm 1,000 acres, if that was a wheat wheat rape farm, you needed £145,000 of capital. By 2014, you needed £370,000 of capital to farm that farm. The level of risk in our businesses has massively increased. We need to understand that and we need to manage our businesses accordingly. Thank you.